All right, welcome back. Uh, today the, I'm going to be doing a review on this kit here. This is the Revell 1958 Corvette Roadster. And this, as you know, this was a gift from friends of mine. And I'm excited to have it. And so what I'm going to do today is show what we have, what comes in the box. Now this one has 149 pieces, so that's above average, um, molded in white. And um, what I see here on this side is that we have two different build options. I know y'all have seen this already, but I put these up here as a database for anybody that's wandering around YouTube looking for a review on this kit. By the way, I didn't see a review on this kit, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, that's great that the trunk opens. And just so this doesn't drag on, what I'm going to do is just get straight into it. So I'm going to break the plastic in on this and I'm going to get into it and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the way it comes packed. I haven't messed with anything. So we got the white wall tires here. The white walls are on there already. That's always handy. Um, I'm not the biggest white wall fan, um, so I'll probably not do this. I think there's another set of tires in here. And then you got a big bag of parts. I'm going to open that in a moment. The body's in there. And then you've got the clear parts, not many. And the foam tree, which we got a lot of parts on there. And I'll get in there closer in a minute. And then the second chrome tree and the other wheels or hubcaps. Yeah, those would be hubcaps. And these would supposedly be wheels. But we'll see. And then there's the instructions. And that's it for the box. Now, while the camera's still rolling, I think I'll try to find the decals. Yeah, they are. Okay, so I'm going to get a super close-up of the decals just to get that done. So, let's do this. Okay. Wow, now this is small. I'm going to put a um, exacto next to it. show you how small that is. And that's down there. So that's your speedometer and the numbers are actually on there. And your gauges. Something that says 250. Something that says 290. Definitely very crisp decals. And this is kind of funny, these appear to be white walls. Even though the white walls are already on the tires. So I suppose, well you know what, I didn't see that second set of tires. So I'm guessing if you don't want white walls, I mean I'll get to that in just a moment. But if you don't want white walls, I think you're probably just turning the tires around. So anyway, I'll start opening some bags and I'll be right back. Okay, and so here's a good close-up of the tires. And I think that what I was saying there is true. I believe if you want the black walls, you just turn them over. And that is what I will be doing. And uh, by the way, I am opening all these bags and not worried about it because um, I've got so much room now that uh, I would have no trouble 
uh, building three kits at once, so I'm going to go ahead and just dive straight into this one as well. And so I will be building three cars on the bench at the same time. So let me get into this chrome tree, both of these chrome trees actually, and I'll be right back. Okay, and then here are the chrome pieces. Um, let me start with, I'll start with the hubcaps. I'll get in there nice and close to look at those. Now if you're building this completely stock, those look to be pretty good. Um, kind of hard to mold parts right there. Okay, steering wheel. Now, okay, I had flipped this over. The actual grips are on... Flip it over there. To show that the actual grips are on there. On the back. So that can be a fairly nice steering wheel. And your license plates. And it appears to be a shifter. Handles and your wipers. Rear view mirror. You know, I have my glasses on and everything, and I can't quite tell what I'm looking at. All right, intake manifold. I think your valve covers. They're done up nice. Your carburetor setup. Now that's what I'll be going with twin carbs and that's the shifter which means that other part was not the shifter okay and up here you got your grill insert needs a little cleaning up boy I wish I had better eyesight I'll be able to tell what that is on the computer screen oh the headlights and the taillights Boy, those look really good. So I'm guessing there are clear parts for the fronts of those. Air cleaner cover. I think these are the little intakes next to the grill. And the windshield frame. More bumpers. Oh boy. Okay, these are logos. Oh my. It's going to be a challenge to get in there and paint that. Now, something I've never achieved is that level of detail to the point where I can go in there and paint the individual parts because I think you're not, well, yeah, you're going to be in a mic, uh, magnifying glass, but you also need a very sharp, like Sharpie pen of some kind. Those are spinners. Okay, and then he, these are the wheels that I'm sure I'm going to go with the steel wheels and these are the hubcaps they will pop right into the middle to cover those lug nuts yeah, I'm sorry I'm learning how to film with this camera this is my good camera okay and when you put those two pieces together they end up looking like that of course, after you put a little bit of a dull coat on them as well, because right now they look like chrome, and I, I think that they're supposed to be stainless steel. But those look good. Those are going to be the ones that I go with. Okay, so I'm going to open up these bags and take a good look at the body, see if it's nice and straight, and some of the other parts. So I'll be right back. Okay, um, forgot there's the, um, the glass pieces. The windshield looks really good. Of course, it came packed in its own bag to protect it and it looks really good to me of course fit is another issue now this is a Revell kit so things are probably going to fit just fine and um, those headlights I was talking about let me see how close I can get there pretty close So, as you can imagine how good that's going to look. And then these little tiny marker lights, which are just the size of 
like smaller than a ball bearing. Easy part to lose. Okay, so really this time I'm gonna open this bag. Be right back. Alright, so I'm starting with the body. And I really like this. And of course the thing that jumps out at you right there is that nice big opening that at first looks, you know, for like a split second you're like, oh good, it's a separate piece, so it's going to be really easy to make that a different color. Because, of course, in the, these older Corvettes, um, that area is always a different color. Or not always, but I mean, it should be. So, there's going to be a separate piece in there, and it's going to be very easy to keep that white, except for right there. is still there so you're gonna have to mask that off and um, it looks like this plastic being white is a pretty good white but I think it's still gonna have to be painted white so it's gonna be a challenge to keep that emblem uh, there so we're gonna be using a very thin coat of one coat of paint and hopefully hold on to that but the detail on the body is nice and crisp nice Ravel kit it's, yeah, so it's a real, going to be a real challenge to hold on to these um, logos and emblems, you know. There's a seam there that I have to sand out, of course. And, um, look at the back there. Another seam inside there, a nice inside seam. It's going to be a challenge to sand, sand out. Looks like we got a kind of a wraparound seam there, which is no problem. I mean, the molds have to go together somewhere. Fuel cap and so on. And then those great double headlights that they went to in 58. Now, let's see. Is the body straight? I think it is. So I think we have a nice level. Is it level? Camera's not level. Yeah. Nice straight body. So which is good. Um, because nobody likes the body warp. Okay, so that's the body. Looks good. And this little parts tree here, we just have a fan shroud. And um uh, probably the front of the interior tub underneath the dashboard. It's got a bit of a carpeting pattern there. And offhand, uh, not completely sure what that is. But it looks like it has the two posts, like this is something that's going to move. Uh, and so on. Okay, next bag. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, I'm gonna flip it over this way, and you got your motor, or engine, or motor. I forget which is which. One is electric only, I think that's motor, and engine is engine, or vice versa. But you know what? Everybody, everybody gets it wrong sometimes, so it's one of those things you just gotta let it go. It's definitely, I believe, you know, definitely a small block. It would say somewhere offhand, I'm just not recalling for the 58 Corvette. And your springs and your exhaust manifold and your other exhaust manifold. This looks like a hose. And uh, your pulleys, a nice big radiator. But, oh, differential. It's kind of funny watching in the viewfinder. You don't know where you are. But this is a nice looking differential. Features molded in. I like that. Also means that's a part you're going to have to paint separately. But it's no problem. I believe that's a brake line. And anyway, that's that sheet. So we have um, 
Don't see exhaust tips. I'm wondering if they were on the chrome sheet or if they're somewhere else. I don't know. All right, next. Just got this little piece with a battery and a wheel back of some kind. Oh, I think this was, okay, this was on the end of this sheet and they snapped it off or cut it off to get it to fit in the bag that they wanted. Okay, explains that, but real good looking battery. Definitely detail that up nice. Oops. I will get the hang of this camera. That's a great looking battery. Okay. And might as well do this little piece here. It's just the taillight lens is molded in red. And you know, on these Corvettes, those never fit in properly, so I've got high hopes for Ravel making that actually work. Because I know in MPC, I had one just floating around in this sea of diesel. Alright, so here we have the frame. Am I upside down? Upside, well, sort of. I am upside down, right? Yeah. No, that's right side up. And so I look forward to cleaning that all up. I like to scrape all the seams off. That's something, one of my little things that I like to do is um, prepare the parts. And it's just like whittling wood. Oh, okay, here we go. The dashboard. Let's take a good look at that. Okay, so this will be interesting because I have, um, I had just shown the decals for these gauges. So, what? What do they want you to do? Put decals on engraved gauges? Will that work? Let me try to get this up into the loop. Alright, everything's wrong here. No, there must be a cluster that goes... There must be something that mounts on that. We'll find it. Because right offhand, the decals don't seem to... Oh, no, there's going to be some detail work that's fun to do. Paint the letters on that logo. Your single mono speaker. Oh, is that a speaker? Yep. Okay, now these parts over here. You've got a separate differential cover. No. Okay, that's the, uh, the front of it. There's your differential. And then there's your the front. These look like um, spindles, and looking at those promising little notches there, yeah, look here. It is posable wheels. Uh, somehow that hadn't clicked when I was looking at the box, but that is a great big feature, so we're going to be able to turn the wheels. There's the column, probably the starter, your uh, shifter. Shock absorbers, uh, wheel backs, more wheel backs. These are probably wheel holders, the little nubs that keep them on. And assorted parts. Now I'm hoping something is going to click with that dashboard because the decals don't make sense to me. Okay, so here we have seats. Very well engraved. Oh boy, I'm going to be able to make these look really good. Look at that piping and I will have to look for internet pictures. Let's see what we got here. In the box. Oh, they painted them all one color. But right there, see that? There's another piece that must go on the uh, 
Oops. Sorry. Must go on the top of the dashboard for that speedometer. And, uh, but they painted the... Oh, look, there's a, a bar to hold on for if you're, the driver's driving crazy for the passenger to hold on to that bar. But anyway, they, they painted the whole... The seat's all one color. It seems to me they shouldn't be, but I'll see. Especially that console in the middle. I don't know. Um, and then there is your center link. Proves you got steering wheels. And your leaf springs. Great detail. Maybe that's a water pump. Uh, your hose for your fuel injected. Uh, yeah, probably your fuel injection. Option that I'm not going to go with. Alright, so next one we've got the interior tub. I think it has the engraved carpeting. I think it's there. And your control arms here. Sway bar, drive shaft, a big X. A big X. Frame stiffener. Another hose. And there's your front of your engine there, timing cover. And there's your intake manifold for your conventional carburetor setup. That's what I'll be going with right there. And that's it for that part sheet. Now, on to this next one. Okay, there's the little inserts for the um, side of the body there. So, at least you have these that you can paint a nice bright white and then glue on but you're still going to have to mask off you'll you know, what you'll do is you'll paint that section right there and then um, tape it and then paint the rest of the body and we're gonna go with yellow again um, there's no beating that uh, rust oleum yellow it's gonna be exactly the same color as the cuda back there I think it will look great um, and then the uh, we have one door panel, hoping for another one. Let's get in close on the detail. So I have to look on the internet to see what what they do with that. It's got a nice texture there. That looks really good. All right, so this is the last piece. There's a couple of things in there. I think it's just stray plastic. But here is the last piece, and that is the frame. Well, not the frame. Boy, it's kind of a second piece to the interior tub. So this piece. So, that piece there stacks on top of this piece here to do whatever. Interesting. And yes, there's the other door panel. That sure looks like the one I just showed. And it does have a top. But, gosh, if you have a convertible kit, there's no way you can put the top on. And then that is the hood with this nice ribbing on there. Which may or may not be supposed to be open. Like vents. Don't know. And the trunk lid, boy. If you all remember the 57 I did, the trunk looked the best. And that's what I'm going to try for again here. I like the way the um, emblem 
the uh, well the filler cap. Well, it's not the filler cap because there was a thing right here on the body for the filler cap. So on this one, that's not the filler cap. That's just a emblem. So you're going to be able to detail out your emblem, which I showed just previously, and then glue it in, um, which will be good. And then the, you got these um, trim pieces here, which, at least on the box art, they did with um, chrome paint or bare metal foil. And I don't know if they did that on the silver one. But I think I will on yellow. I think that will look good on yellow. And, huh, what do you know? That's it. I think that's it. Yeah, okay, so the underside. The underside of that same piece. Um, I'm guessing... I'm guessing that's the gas tank, but it sure looks like it might be a spare tire holder. Offhand, I'm not seeing a gas tank. Maybe that is the gas tank. Where's the gas tank, guys? Is that a spare tire? That's a spare tire holder. Uh, anybody see a gas tank? So, the kit may not have a gas tank. Or I missed it somewhere. Or it's chromed or something. Oh, didn't see a gas tank. So, what I'll do is I'm going to go through the instructions really quickly to see if there's supposed to be a gas tank and I'll be right back to wrap this up. Okay, so I've looked at the instructions and I don't see any different gas tank, so I'm gonna go with the assumption that this this circle here is the gas tank and not a spare tire holder from within the trunk. Um, yeah, gosh, if you all know, um, it, obviously I have some things to learn about the underside of the older Corvettes, um, but I, that, that has to be the gas tank because otherwise there isn't one. Um, so where do you put the spare tire? It must go um, higher up in the trunk, probably right above that, um, inside the trunk cavity. And I don't know, um, um, okay, here we go. Basically what you see there is nothing. Kind of looks like something against the back wall there. I also didn't see that piece. So... How is it that you're supposed to, um... Nope, somebody has taken an artistic... No, 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 that's the reason why... Okay. Sorry, guys. There's a look at... what's going to be inside of the trunk. And so, that little impression right there... Is that the spare tire? Guys, let me know. Um, kind of curious. It's a little small to be a spare tire. But th yeah, that has got to be the gas tank right there. And so there is a gas tank. Um, other than that, I saw something in the instructions just verifying, yeah, the big X is a frame stiffener. And it kind of goes on the big X on the frame. Uh, looks like to kind of hold the exhaust on right here. Should look pretty neat. So, yeah, I'm just afraid it's been over 10 years since I've built one of these older Corvettes, so I'm a little rusty, but I will get back up to speed and we will build this sucker. And so there are three kits on the bench. Watch for updates on this one as well. I'm trying to get the box out again. There we go. The 58 Corvette Roadster is getting started today, so watch for updates on that one and on the C5R and the Digger Cuda. They're coming because 
I'm actually able to build. This has been great. So, catch you later. Stay tuned. And have a good one.